panels in the prevention and treatment of osteoporosis in vivo studies. Thank you, Professor Kosla, for your kind words. Ladies and gentlemen, I am the last speaker of a long day, so I hope this will be short and sweet. I will take you through a series of my studies on uh, the role of palm tocotrienols in the prevention and treatment of osteoporosis. These are all animal studies, and these are all published data. Why we started to do this study? Um, free radicals have been shown to be involved in the formation and activation of, of osteoclasts, leading to an increase in bone resorption and bone loss. And bone histomorphometric studies have shown that the oxidizing agent, ferric nitrilotriacetate, has increased osteoblast numbers and impaired mineralization. And human studies have shown that osteoporotic women had higher plasma superoxide dismutase, an antioxidant enzyme, and higher MDA, malonaldehyde levels. Uh, another study found a negative correlation, and uh, uh, another paper actually uh, stated that increased osteoclastic activity and decreased osteoblastic activity may be associated with an imbalance between oxidant and antioxidant status in postmenopausal osteoporosis. So based on that, we came up with a research question. Can antioxidants, namely tocotrienol, prevent and treat osteoporosis? So we all know that uh, the main source of tocotrienols here in this country is from palm oil. Our studies used mainly tocotrienols extracted from palm oil in the form of tocotrienol mixtures as well as the pure gamma isomer. We use the rat as our animal model since previous studies have shown that their bone anatomy, bone remodeling, and response to treatment are similar to humans. So the main objective of our studies is to determine the effects of palm oil-derived tocotrienols on various animal models of osteoporosis and to determine the effects of palm oil-derived tocotrienols on normal bone. So we use male and female sprout dolly or Vista rats. The age and body weights were according to the respective experiments. And our source of palm oil derived tocotrienols in the form of mixtures or single isomers was from various sources, the Palm Oil Research Institute, Carotec, and Golden Hope. The palm tocotrienol extract was diluted in olive oil to the desired concentration. It was given to the animals by oral garbage six uh, days a week for about eight, for eight weeks. We measured several parameters, uh, but the main parameter, uh, the parameters that I'm going to show you are bone histomorphometry, which was done on the left femur, and bone biomechanical strength test, which was done on the right femur. For bone histomorphometry, Basically, there are three, it's divided into three. The parameters are divided into three. The structural parameters, dynamic parameters, and static or cellular parameters. We use the image analyzer, which was connected to a microscope, either the light microscope or fluorescent microscope. And a Weibel grid was used for some of the measurements. The area where we took our histomorphometric measurement was consistently three to seven millimeters from the growth plate at the distal end of the femur. This is the distal end of the red femur. Uh, three to seven millimeters from the growth plate, one mm lateral, uh, one mm from the lateral cortex. This is the area that is most active and contains a high amount of trabecular bone. The structural histomorphometric parameters uh, we obtain from using, uh, this is the undecalcified uh, section, uh, stained with bone fossa, and the black uh, part is the bone spicules. 
the, the parameters that we obtained was bone volume, trabecular thickness, trabecular separation, and trabecular number. Some are uh, obtained uh, from the software and some are derived. Dynamic histomorphometric parameters. This is the undecalcified, unstained section with uh, the fluorescence is due to calcine labeling which we injected into the animal nine days and two days before sacrifice. So the two layers, you have a double layer, I'm not sure that you can see, indicates bone growth in seven days. So from this, we can derive the bone formation rate, mineral apposition rate, uh, which are the two uh, main indicators of bone growth. The static histomorphometric parameters is obtained uh, with decalcified uh, samples stained with H&E. And, &E. and uh, we uh, could calculate the mean osteoclast number, mean osteoblast number, and eroded surface as well as the osteoid volume and osteoid surface. Uh, that is the bone histomorphometric parameters. Now, as for the bone biomechanical test, we did the three-point configuration test where this is the femur. We apply a force until the bone breaks. So this is how it looks like. The femur is dissected out. This is the machine, the Instron machine with Blue Hill software. The bone is placed like this. A load is applied, and it's applied until the bone breaks. The parameters that we can get from this uh, test, the extrinsic uh, strength, which uh, measures or indicates the, ex the strength of the external bone structure, and the in intrinsic strength, which is the strength of the internal bone structure, Displacement, load and stiffness, stress, strain and viscoelasticity, this is all generated by the software. Okay, the software will generate two graphs. This is the load displacement curve for extrinsic uh, bone strength and the stress strain curve for intrinsic strength. Okay, so uh, I will go uh, through the, some of the experiments that we did. First, we ask ourselves whether palm tocotrienol can prevent osteoporotic changes in rats exposed to the oxidizing agent, ferric nitrilotriacetate. And the parameter uh, we measured was bone histomorphometry as well as the lipid peroxidation byproduct, thiobarbituric acid reactive substances uh, in the left femur. Okay, this is the... Uh, Photo micrograph. This is the baseline control. The normal control just given saline. This is the uh, reds given the, the oxidizing agent, ferric NTA. You can see there's a bone loss compared to the normal control. This is the group given alpha tocopherol, and this is the group given tocotrienol. So, well, there appears to be more bone here. We will look at the quantitative measurements. This is the group given tocotrienol. You can see that the bone volume is higher, significantly higher than the group given ferric NTA. And uh, this is the group given alpha tocopherol. The, it is not different from the group given uh, the oxidizing agent. Similar findings in trabecular thickness. The group given tocotrienol, the uh, trabecular is significantly thicker than the group given ferric NTA, and uh, no difference uh, in the group given alpha tocopherol. Uh, no significant difference in trabecular number and trabecular separation. I'm not showing you the, uh, the dynamic and static parameters, but they are consistent. Uh, we found increased osteoblast number and decreased osteoclast number in the groups given tocotrienol. 
as far as the this is another experiment where we measure, where we supplemented normal rats eh? normal rats with palm tocotrienol and alpha tocopherol at different doses this is alpha tocopherol 30 60 and 100 milligrams uh, per kg this is tocotrienol 30 60 and 100 milligrams per kg you can see that the there is a decrease in the level of the lipid peroxidation byproduct in the group given in the groups given tocotrienol in a dose dependent manner and no significant difference in the tocopherol groups so based on that we concluded that palm tocotrienol protected the bone of rats from osteoporotic changes caused by ferric nitrilo triacetate and palm tocotrienol reduced the levels of lipid peroxidation byproduct in the red femur. Therefore, the bone protective effects of palm tocotrienol is most probably due to its antioxidant properties. And then we went on to study the effects of palm tocotrienols on bone in estrogen deficient osteoporosis. Here, our model is uh, the, ov the, overre the overectomized female rats. This has been uh, consistently used as an animal model of postmenopausal histomorphometry. And we did the bone histomorphometry. So this is the photomicrograph. This is the uh, overectomized group. Okay. This is the sham operated group. Yeah, the, over uh, the ovaries are not removed here. Yeah? This is the overectomized group where we remove the ovaries. And this is the group given uh, alpha tocopherol, the group given palm tocotrienol. Quantitatively, you can see that the trabecular, this is the trabecular volume. This is the overectomized group. This is baseline control, sham operated control, overectomized group alpha tocopherol and palm tocotrienol. So here, both the two types of vitamin E improve the trabecular number. It reduces the, it reduced the trabecular separation. You can see that in the overectomized group, the trabecular is further apart, but this is prevented by the two types of vitamin E. This is uh, trabecular number is also uh, increased in the two types of vitamin E, but there's no difference in trabecular thickness. Okay, so we concluded from that study that tocotrienol was able to prevent osteoporotic changes in bone histomorphometry due to estrogen deficiency in overectomized rats. And we uh, expanded on this study by comparing palm tocotrienols to calcium and to estrogen and we found consistently that the palm tocotrienol was even better than calcium and estrogen in maintaining the bone formation rate. The, therefore, we concluded that tocotrienol has the potential to be used as supplements to prevent osteoporosis in perimenopausal and postmenopausal women. Then we went on to study the effects of palm tocotrienols on normal non-osteoporotic bone. Our research question was, can tocotrienols improve bone structure and biomechanical strength in normal non-osteoporotic rats? So we did the bone histomorphometry as well as the bone biomechanical strength test. This is the the structural bone histomorphometry. This is the normal control, not supplemented. This is alpha tocopherol group, and this is gamma tocotrienol. For this experiment, we managed to get uh, pure gamma isomer. What we found was, for trabecular volume, you can see that the gamma isomer increase the trabecular volume much higher than the control or the alpha tocopherol. 
Similarly, for trabecular number and trabecular thickness. Consistently, the gamma isomer improve the bone, improve the trabecular uh, thickness as well as volume and number compared to the normal control as well as the group given alpha to coferol. And trabecular separation, you can see that the gamma uh, isomer reduce the trabecular separation, meaning that there's more trabecular, they are closer together. For the bone biomechanical strength test, okay, you can see again, this is the this is the gamma tocotrienol isomer. It is higher or the, okay, this is the load. Eh? Load. You can see that the gamma tocotrienol isomer was able to withstand a higher load before fracture compared to the normal control as well as the alpha tocopherol group. The alpha tocopherol group, there's no significant difference from the normal control. Okay, for the stress, again, the gamma tocotrienol group is able to withstand more stress compared to the alpha tocopherol group as well as the normal control. Displacement, again, consistently, the gamma tocotrienol group is able to withstand more displacement and strain. So the results are all consistent. Elastic modulus. Again, we see similar results. The gamma tocotrienol is superior. It is able to withstand. Uh, it, uh, it is able, it, it has more elasticity, so therefore able to withstand fracture, as well as it is also stiff. These are both uh, properties which are uh, important yeah, for the bone to withstand fracture. So our results showed that gamma tocotrienol improved bone structural histomorphometric parameters significantly more than the normal control group, and gamma tocotrienol improved bone biomechanical strength parameters significantly more than the normal control group. Our conclusion, gamma tocotrienol supplementation improved bone structure which contributed to improved bone strength. Therefore, this uh, implies and this suggests that tocotrienols has the potential to be used as an anabolic agent to treat osteoporosis or as bone supplements for young adults to achieve higher peak bone mass. This can prevent osteoporosis in later years. Yeah, so there is an indication that besides preventing osteoporosis uh, uh, in post, uh, preventing postmenopausal osteoporosis, it may also be useful to, in, to increase peak bone mass in young adults. And as we know, one of the factors that reduce osteoporosis is high peak bone mass. We have also conducted other studies. Uh, chronic smokers are found to have lower uh, bone density. So uh, what we did was we uh, gave lo uh, nicotine injections to uh, rats and we found that uh, their bone mineral density was reduced. Yeah? Their bone structure was impaired. So what we did was we reversed this by, we were able to reverse this by giving tocotrienol. And apart from that, we also studied fracture uh, healing of osteoporotic bone. Yeah, we fractured uh, osteoporotic bone, fixed the fracture with uh, K wire, uh, left the fracture to heal, and supplemented. At the same time, we supplemented the animals with uh, tocotrienol, and we found that. Uh, and after the fracture has healed, we applied the bone biomechanical strength test. And we found that the, the bo bones of the rats which were treated with uh, tocotrienol, the, the fracture callus was stronger. The fracture callus was able to withstand uh, more load and more stress before fracturing. Therefore, pump tocotrienol may also 
uh, be used, yeah, it may have the potential to be used to accelerate osteoporotic fracture healing. Okay, that, were, that, uh, is, uh, that uh, was some of our studies. Now, uh, I just would like to mention uh, this. This is a paper which uh, came out in Nature Medicine last year. Vitamin E decreases bone mass by stimulating osteoclast fusion. And this paper generated a lot of uh, concern regarding uh, long-term usage of vitamin E. So upon reading the paper, this, this was some of the uh, uh, quotation from the paper. With the exception of alpha tocopherol, none of the isoforms of vitamin E, including alpha tocotrienol, which is a hundredfold stronger in antioxidant activity than alpha tocopherol, stimulated osteoclast fusion. And except for alpha tocopherol, none of the antioxidants tested stimulated osteoclast fusion. So taken together, these results showed that unlike other vitamin E isoforms, alpha tocopherol specifically regulates osteoclast fusion. So, upon reading the paper, it is quite clear that the tocotrienols are not detrimental to bone. Uh, it is the alpha tocopherol. However, uh, I would like to note here that the dose used in this study was 600 milligrams, which was 10 times the dose that we use, the alpha tocopherol dose that we use in our studies. So, the answer is no. Tocotrienol is not bad for bones. So the overall conclusion and recommendation from uh, our studies, our study showed that palm tocotrienol, especially the gamma isomer, has the potential to be further developed as an anti-osteoporotic agent. It has the efficacy to prevent and reverse osteoporosis due to various factors. And our studies also suggest that palm tocotrienol supplementation to young adults may increase peak bone mass and strength, leading to reduced risk of osteoporosis in later life. However, there is still a lot of work to be done, as our studies are mainly are still at the in vivo stage. So what we, need to do, uh, uh, what we need to do further would be uh, further studies, yeah? the, to establish the molecular mechanism of action of tocotrienols. So we need to do in vitro studies. And uh, we need to do clinical trials. Yeah? It, clinical trials to, are needed to translate the effects of the animal studies onto humans. The effective dose and duration of treatment in humans need to be established. And we also need specific and comprehensive toxicity studies targeting the effective dose and duration of treatment from our studies, as well as the specific preparations and type of tocotrienol because in our studies we use mixtures of tocotrienol as well as gamma isomer so we need to uh, get the correct uh, type of tocotrienol um, I would like to thank my research group which I thought I have a slide here but apparently it is missing I would like to thank my research group as well as my postgraduate students and undergraduate students, as well as University of Malaysia, the Malaysia, the Ministry of uh, Higher Education, as well as the Ministry of Science and Technology, for the grants that have been given to carry out these studies. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Professor Solomon. We have about four minutes left. So what I'm going to do is to say, if you have any questions, Professor Solomon or uh, Dr. Gupta, please um, come forward. Um, four minutes, so let's see what we can do. Then we will be closing the day. So either for Dr. Gupta or Professor Solomon.